Is Genie Plus worth it in Disney's Animal Kingdom? I'm gonna get every lightning lane today to find out. Hey everybody, we're back with another Genie Challenge, this time at Disney's Animal Kingdom. And while Disney's Animal Kingdom doesn't pose the same challenge as Magic Kingdom with its 23 attractions, Hollywood Studios with its 16, including big name attractions, people are still wondering if they should purchase Genie Plus for Animal Kingdom. So we're headed around the park today to use it, see how much time we save. Surprise everybody, Expedition Everest has reopened as of April 16th, and it was added to the Genie Plus roster as opposed to being a fancy ride. It was not open when I filmed this video, but I still address it as part of the strategy and how to best use Genie Plus in the park. Enjoy the video. And see if this is something you should purchase for your next Disney visit. I think they're already going awry. It's only eight something in the morning. I thought Animal Kingdom would be the easy part. As I walk towards my first attraction, let's do a little Genie 101, and then I'll tell you what happened this morning. And it's gonna be a lot of talking, but I'll promise to be quick and concise. I promise between myself and the editor, it'll be entertaining and informative. So Genie is the new fast pass system that rolled out about six months ago. There are three different types of Genie. There's Disney Genie, which is the free part of the app, which allows you to have customized wide itineraries, access to the tip board with the wait times, the dining tip board, as well as projected wait times. You have Genie Plus. This is $15 per person per day. It allows you skip the line access at over 40 attractions across all four parks. You can use the lightning lane, which is the physical entrance at each ride, one time per ride. Then there are fancy rides, as I call them. These are individual attractions that have an individual cost to use the lightning lane and skip the line. You do not have to purchase Genie Plus to buy fancy rides. Lightning Lane is just the physical lane at the entrance. Again, both Genie Plus attractions and fancy rides have lightning lanes. A couple key rules to using Genie Plus, anyone, regardless of where you're staying, can book your first Genie Plus attraction at 7 a.m. For fancy rides, resort guests get the advantage of being able to book at 7 a.m. Non-resort guests can book at the time that park officially opens. This morning, right at 7 a.m., I booked what I recommend as your first Lightning Lane, which is Navi River Journey in Pandora. But as you can see, I'm not in Pandora, I'm in Africa. While I did act quick and pull a 7.35, five minutes after park opened Lightning Lane for Navi River Journey, shortly before that, I got a notification that the attraction was temporarily closed and it has yet to reopen. So I've already been issued an experience recovery. An experience recovery allows you to visit the attraction that's closed during your time or other certain attractions as listed on the pass whenever you'd like throughout the day. I'm gonna save it for Navi River Journey. It doesn't feel fair to use it somewhere else, but you could on a regular day. An experience recovery pass does not count as a lightning lane in the system. It classifies them as two different things, which means if you have a lightning lane booked on a Genie Plus attraction and you get an experience recovery, you can immediately book another lightning lane. So I went ahead and booked Kilimanjaro Safaris, which is what we're gonna do first. I'm going to throw one more phrase at you before we ride Kilimanjaro Safaris, and that's fiddle faddle. That's a phrase I use to talk about looking for better fast pass plus times. It's carried over to Genie Plus. Basically, fiddle faddling means to refresh the screen. For Genie Plus attractions, not fancy rides, they're available on a first come, first serve basis. So when you look at the tip board, it's going to show you the next available time. And times do run out. However, if you refresh the screen, new times might pop up. So I call it fiddle faddling, where you refresh the screen a few times and see if a more desirable time pops up. When I was looking for Kilimanjaro Safaris after my Navi River journey uh, was canceled or turned into an experience recovery, it was around noon that I was seeing Kilimanjaro Safaris. So I refreshed her a few times and eventually pulled an 820. Fiddle faddling is my biggest tip when it comes to Genie Plus. It's not ideal. Of course, in a more ideal world, the system would just show you earlier times when you first looked at it. but to maximize the system, you can refresh a few times. I don't recommend doing it for hours, but you can refresh a few times, see if something better comes along.
tip, when you get off safari, come look at this overlook right here, because you may just see a pretty impressive creature. Can you see him? Hey, big fella. He's just contemplating the meaning of life. He's all of us when your alarm goes off at 7 a.m. and you just look out into the abyss and think, do I really need to pay my bills? If we weren't on a quest right now, I would be doing a loop-de-loop -loop at the Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail, which is where you can see the gorillas up close, including the baby gorillas, meerkats, zebras. I love the animal trails here. They're one of my favorite things to do. Safari check. I love that attraction. It is so good. Safari's already had a 65-minute wait when I get on it, and it looks even longer now. It now has a 70 minute wait and I walked on and was on within five minutes. My recommendation for safaris if you don't want to purchase Genie Plus, Kilimanjaro Safaris does not open early for early theme park entry for resort guests. So that means all guests are on a level playing field. It actually opened at 8.15 today, even though the park opened at 7.30. I would recommend being at safaris as early as possible. Get there right when it opens up. You can usually walk right on, and um, you'll get a really great safari since it's in the morning. So I don't think you need Genie Plus in this park, like I said, and that's a great way to get on safaris. Plus, if you are a resort guest, you can get on some of the Pandora rides during that early entry and then go over to safaris. But we are headed now to Rafiki's Planet Watch. This is a whole land that a lot of people don't realize even exists. You have to take a train to get up there because there is a lightning lane attraction that I booked while waiting to board my safari truck. And I have about 10 minutes to get there. So fingers crossed I can do that. One of my best genie tips is to try and always have one. Now don't book willy nilly because you can't modify it. You have to cancel it and then rebook it. But as soon as you tap into your attraction, you're welcome to start looking for another one. So I did. I got got on Festival of the Lion King. I wanted to book the next show, but by the time I clicked it, it had switched to the next next show. Um, so I went ahead and booked the animation experience up at Rafiki's Planet Watch. And it looks like I just missed the train. At this point, I have um, four minutes to get to the animation experience if I get there on time. Now, sometimes I'll let you in a few minutes late, but I don't know if that will apply to the animation class. So fingers crossed I can get there on time. Okay, I have two minutes to get there before the class begins. I don't know if they're going to let me in late. They will usually let you in a few minutes late to an attraction, like a ride, but they will not usually let you in late to a show like Festival of the Lion King. So we'll see where this lands. I would not recommend this. This is what I get for staring at gorillas for too long. Now power walking through the planet watch. Obviously stare at the gorillas, enjoy yourself, but then don't try and make a lightning lane 10 minutes later that you have to take a train to. Hello, am I allowed to join? Yes. And it's Bruce? This is the best moment of my life. Oh my gosh, thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited because not only did I make the class, but they were drawing Bruce, and I've never been so lucky as to draw Bruce. If you don't know, Great White Sharks is my favorite animal. It's not great, but I tried. Also, the artist was awesome because he was telling everyone that you shouldn't be afraid of sharks because more people get killed by cows every year, and that sharks are not mindless eating machines like the media portrays them. And by the media, I mean my favorite movie of all time, Jaws. But 
you know, sharks are the best. The animation class is about 25 minutes or so, plus you have to make the trek up here to Rafiki's Planet Watch. Um, so it may not be for everyone, but I like coming up here. It's a great way to kill time to get away from some of the crowds. Kids love it up here. I don't think you need a lightning lane for this. Just show up early for the class. Um, they had plenty of room available. The later in the day, the more crowded it'll get up here. Um, but if you just show up a little bit early, you should make the class. Animation class done. I'd be lying if I said I didn't make a little decor toward a pet a goat. This is prom. <gasps> Stop it. That's my dog's name. Oh my god, that's funny. Oh my gosh, will you be my best friend, goat? My dog's going to be so mad. This is definitely your best friend. Right? Oh. Kronk. Hi, Kronk. I love you so much. This is so Hi. Florida native. She has <laughs> but now we're headed back to the mainland. Let's do a little wait time check as we head back to the train. Flight of passage, 110 minutes. That is a fancy ride. Purchase that earlier. We'll get into that in a bit. Dinosaur is 50 minutes with a 350 genie. Tough to be bugged, 20 minutes, 11 a.m. So it can book that kind of whenever. Cali River Rapids, ugh, 45 minute wait, 345. Navi River Journey is still closed, but I do have one for whenever it reopens. We've also got to worry about Festival of the Lion King and Feathered Prince in Flight, The Bird Show. Um, and Safaris is already a 95 minute wait, so you definitely want to rope drop or use Genie Plus on that one. And you can tell it's a busy day because there's a 25 minute wait at Triceratops. I'm headed back now to the mainland and it is time to use my lightning lane for Avatar, Flight of Passage, which I actually have about 30 more minutes to use, but I'm going to go ahead and knock that out. Hope against hope that Navi River journey comes up while I'm still in Pandora. Otherwise, it might be time to start looking to head into Asia and Dino Land. But I'm going to have to fiddle faddle a little bit, I think, to get a better time for Dinosaur. Although the park is incredibly busy, it's still a lot more laid back than, like, Magic Kingdom. I've only done two lightning lanes, and it's 11. I had done, like, what, eight by this time in Magic Kingdom. But this park's a lot more leisurely. That's not to say... You shouldn't strategize. I think if you get to this park at open and even better early theme park entry as resort guests, you can get a lot done. And then you can kind of luxuriate a little bit more in this beautiful park. I tell you what's going to be an unexpected problem on Lightning Lane is Festival of the Lion King, even though it deserves all the accolades in the world. Currently, the Lightning Lane, if I don't refresh, is for the 3 o'clock show and it's 11.08. You can see how popular it is. This is for the standby line for the noon show. And again, it's 11.08. I may have to kick off the dreaded 120 minute rule for Festival of the Lion King. I don't want to, but I will if I have to. We have made it to the world of Avatar, so let's talk fancy rides. Fancy Rides TM is what I refer to them because they're officially called Individual Lightning Lane a la carte paid selections. Once again, they are a separate cost from Genie Plus per Fancy Ride. Currently, each park has one Fancy Ride. You do not have to purchase Genie Plus in order to purchase Fancy Rides and vice versa. And you can purchase up to two per day, obviously, in different parks. Unlike Genie Plus, which is first available, you can select a time out of what's available when booking your Fancy Rides. Now, of course, that means at 7 a.m. the resort guests are going to get top priority and pretty much have their pick of time on this particular attraction. And then when the park officially opens for the rest of guests, you may not have that many available. This morning, Disney's Animal Kingdom officially opened at 7.30 in the morning. I had a little app issue at 7.30 in the morning, and I went in to purchase one, I think, for around 9.30, and it glitched out, and I had to hard close the app, which is very annoying. And when, by the time I reopened the app, it was telling me the only times available were like 7.30 p.m. Which is great, but I didn't really want one at 7.30 p.m. So I did a little experiment that I would not really recommend, but I wanted to see if it would work. I definitely don't recommend doing this with Rise of the Resistance. I refreshed for a little bit. I fiddle-faddled the fancy ride. At one point it said they were all gone. But I know this ride pops back up frequently throughout the day, unlike Rise of the Resistance at Studios. So I refreshed it a few times and eventually was able to buy one for 10.20 to 11.20. And I've seen it come and go throughout the day. 
pretty consistently. So, I am not telling you to take that gamble, but I am telling you, you might wanna take that gamble if you see a time that you don't love. I would not recommend doing that if you've got a huge party, because unlike Genie Plus, party size does impact fancy rides. And I would not recommend doing that if the only thing you wanna do in Animal Kingdom is ride Flight of Passage, lock it in when you see it. Tapped in again and just waiting to be called into the link chamber. It's that time of the video where I remind you that a lightning lane doesn't mean walk on access, it just means priority access, so you still might wait a little bit. Most of the time I wait less than five or so minutes, but at attractions like this, which have a very slow load and unload process and not a huge capacity, it may take a little bit longer. But it's certainly going to be better than that 110 posted wait, and yes, it probably really will be that long, because if you remember from the Is Animal Kingdom Lying About Lines? video where I tested the weights. I really did wait in this line for so many hours. Flight of Passage, check. It really is a cool attraction. I don't even love simulators. I don't ride this one that much because I don't want to wait in a 120 minute line. Um, but it really is great. You should put it on your Animal Kingdom priority list. It was $11 for me to skip it today, skip that line. I know that's a lot, especially when you have other people in your party. If you don't want to pay for it, my recommendations are if you're a resort guest, come early. I know this park's early, theme park entry is early. But if you can get here and get on this attraction first thing, you probably can get on it in less than 45 minutes or an hour, which is pretty good for this one. If you're not a resort guest, we're gonna do an experiment where we see um, how long the wait is for a not resort guest to come rope drop it. Otherwise, I recommend later in the day, most people park hop out of Animal Kingdom. They come here since it's open the earliest and then they leave to go to another park. But if you flip-flop that, you can usually get on things later in the day here without a long wait. But I will warn you, even though you are still welcome to jump in the line one minute before the park closes, the cast members did tell me that it stayed pretty long throughout the day because people want to ride this and they don't want to pay for it. So you can always do that trick, but the trick of like doing that and hoping it'll be 25 minutes, probably not going to happen. But at least then you're spending an hour or so after park hours. All right, so when walking over here, I did a little fiddle faddling and I was finally able to have a earlier Festival of the Lion King show up. So I'm going in at 12.30, which is great because it was showing 2.30, but I have a little bit of time. I've got about 40 minutes, so naturally I'm gonna have some lunch and naturally I mobile ordered at Satuli Canteen. This is a really popular quick service restaurant, so if you want to eat here, especially during peak lunch time like I am right now, definitely recommend mobile order ordering early. Obviously, I got a cheeseburger pod kids meal. It's like my favorite thing to eat here. It's basically a Big Mac stuffed in a bao bun. Gotta get that creamy herb dressing. I love getting kids meals because you get a little drink, you get a little side. They're great, they're perfect for a snack or a light meal. Um, and I'm gonna eat this for a few minutes while I wait for Lion King. Finished my delicious cheeseburger pod. Never mad about that. And now I'm headed back to Africa to see Festival of the Lion King. The Navi River journey still hasn't come up. It is still down. And uh, let's do a little 12.30 almost wait time check. Flight of Passage is 105. Says it's out of Lightning Lanes, but I've seen it pop up again. So that one, there may still be hope. Festival of the Lion King, the next one available at this point is for the 4 o'clock show. So you'd book it at 3.30 for the 4 o'clock show. Dinosaur is kind of my problem child right now because it's already to 6.05. 50 minute wait. Feathered Friends in Flight, the bird show. Tough to be a bug, not really going to be a problem. That's going to be one I can just like 
book when I need it. It does have a 30 minute wait if that gives you any indication how busy it is today. My other problem child, for so many reasons, is Cali River Rapids, which has a 60 minute wait and it's already at 5.55. Navi already closed. And uh, Safari's up to 95 minutes. So this park doesn't have a ton of options on Genie Plus. I am hoping more comes soon. Expedition Everest is of course closed for refurbishment right now. Expedition Everest was a fancy ride, but I would guess it gets moved into Genie Plus since one at every other park got moved into Genie Plus from the fancy ride category. And when they did that over Christmas, it was Everest here. I also would guess, again, this is just me making an educated guess, that whenever the reimagining of the Finding Nemo musical reopens this spring, I would guess that gets added to Genie Plus, considering it was a Fast Pass Plus. I'd also guess that when Mickey and Minnie's meet and greet at Adventures Outpost reopens, also reopening sometime this spring, I would guess that becomes Genie Plus as well because it had Fast Pass Plus. So the more options you have, it helps disperse everybody. And it's always good to increase the value of a product. Festival of the Lion King is my favorite thing of Disney World. And unlike a lot of the shows at Disney's Hollywood Studios, which I said, use this filler, don't book Genie Plus for them. I'm not going to say that about Festival of the Lion King. It's incredibly popular, and standby lines to get in can be upwards of an hour. So you're going to want to prioritize this. I would consider it a tier one at this park. Also note, shows are particularly tricky to book on Genie Plus because unlike a ride, which has a ton of times throughout the day, they have it at 9 o'clock, 9 to 5, 9 10, 9 15, et cetera, et cetera. Shows only have a certain amount of shows a day, usually about six. And therefore there's only six return windows to make matters harder. Once the return window has opened, you can't book it anymore. For example, right now on Genie Plus, the next available is for the four o'clock show. The return window is from 3.30 to 3.50, but at 3.31, you can't book it anymore. It will disappear and go to the next showtime. So you have to make sure you book it before it opens. It's very sneaky that way. It's very tricky to do shows, but I do think this is one you should prioritize. Now that I've tapped in at Festival of the Lion King, I can go ahead and start fiddle faddling for something closer. One thing I recommend is setting up your genie day like this. When you set up your genie day, you select your top picks and that's how you pin things to your tip board, which is really helpful when you're looking for certain genie plus lightning lane return times or just want to know what your favorite rides weights are. And you can edit it throughout the day by hitting edit selections. So I like to remove anything I've already done or anything I'm not really looking for. Like I know it's tough to be a bug is going to be an easy one to get. I've already got Ivy River Journey. I've already got Lion King. So I'm going to remove all of those. So that way those are pinned up at the top. This is definitely something I recommend doing right at 7 a.m. as well because you are going to want to have Rise the Resistance pinned or Flight of Passage pinned or Slinky Dog pinned or whatever it is you're going for right at 7 o'clock. You're going to want that pinned up at the top so you don't have to worry about scrolling through the whole list. So I'm just gonna fiddle for a bit to see if I can get anything sooner on Dinosaur or Cali River Rapids. <sighs> version is great but I am so excited because this summer the tumble monkeys and the birds are coming back I'm gonna cry all over again it's gonna be opening day all over again can't wait for that whilst waiting to enter the theater I refreshed I fiddle faddled for like three minutes so not too long and I was able to pull a dinosaur for 110 to 210 it's like 1.30 right now, so I'm headed over that way. A couple interesting things I observed though along my fiddle faddle is that at the time, It's Tough to Be a Bug had moved out to almost two hours from when it was, which is wild. And two, Flight of Passage came back a few times. Three, Navi River still down. And four, I don't know what four was. I forgot four already. 
so many things just happened. One, it started raining, so I put this on, which I knew I'd have to put on at some point today to ride Cali River Rapids, but it's like a sun shower. Two, Navi River Journey is back. Three, dinosaur is down. Dinosaur just closed for technical difficulties, and I got another experience redemption for that one. So we're going to hang on to that till dinosaur comes back. At this point, I'm going to stand inside and fiddle paddle for a few minutes for maybe Cali River Rapids, because I've already got my rain jacket on. Maybe it's tough to be a bug, because it's right there. <laughs> we'll find out. All right, here's what I think I'm going to do, because it's foolishness to sit here and fiddle faddle for it's tough to be a bug. It has a 15 minute wait. That's, that's wild. Um, so, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna book the two o'clock bird show because there's only two more bird shows left. And if the weather's gonna be doing this, I don't want the bird show to get canceled and then me not be able to use it. Can you imagine being taken down by the bird show? So now I have till 2.15 to go tapping at the bird show. I'm gonna go use that redemption at Navi River Journey, get that over with. I know I'm zigzagging a little bit at this point, but I want to make sure Navi River Journey doesn't close either. If you were excited to ride this and it came back up standby, it's already a 105 minute wait for standby, which is bonkers town, USA, considering flight of passage is 110 minutes. But what happens when a ride comes back up, especially one that's been down to almost 2 p.m. in the afternoon, is everybody that had a lightning lane up until this time can use theirs now. They can use that redemption pass that I got and they're gonna prioritize everybody in the lightning lane over the people in the standby lane even more than they already do. And a ride's weight is based on how popular an attraction is, how fast you can load and unload it, and how many people can fit on it, the capacity. I've said this a million times, but this attraction is pretty popular because it's in Avatar. It's got a very slow load and unload to get people in and out of those boats, and it has a very low capacity. So it usually has one of the longest lines in the park, which is why I say to book this one first when you're doing Genie Plus, even over safaris. And it's also why if it comes back up, you're gonna wait even longer in standby than normal. But that happened with Fast Pass too, don't forget. Anytime you have a priority lane, that's gonna happen. River Journey check. That animatronic is really cool. That attraction typically has a really long wait, which is why I put it as your top priority at 7 a.m. if you're using Genie Plus, if you care about this ride. If you don't care about this ride, then Kilimanjaro Safari should be your top book at 7 a.m. If you do not purchase Genie Plus for this park, as a resort guest, your best bet is to do this first thing in the morning along with Flight of Passage at that early theme park entry. See if you can knock out both of those in the first 30 minutes. As a non-resort guest, hopefully it'll drop a little bit in the afternoon, but this one's pretty long all the time at this point. Every time I'm in this land, I'm just like, what a beautiful and incredibly detailed and immersive land. I wish I cared about this film franchise. You know what I mean? I don't know anyone who's like an Avatar stan. People like, the movie. People saw the movie. It's like the highest grossing movie of all time. But I don't know anyone who's like, oh, Avatar, it's my favorite movie. So glad they finally made a land themed after it. I'm just saying, I know this was Disney's answer to Harry Potter. I wish it was Lord of the Rings. Made it to Feathered Friends in Flight. This is the iteration of the bird show we have now. There's been a bird show here for a long time. It was called Flights of Wonder. Then it was Up, a great bird adventure, and it featured Up characters. It's back to just being about the birds, no characters. This is one I definitely don't think you need to use a lightning lane. Obviously, I am for this video purposes. But you can usually show up maybe 15 or 20 minutes or so before the show and get a seat. 
So I'd consider this to be like a tier three. It's a great filler uh, attraction. And of course, when I say filler, I'm not insulting the attraction in any way. It's just, I mean, it's something that probably doesn't have that long of a wait in between waiting for your lightning lanes or your long lines. Y'all sat down, I took my ears off, which I like to do at shows as a courtesy to the people behind me. I have 14 minutes to fiddle faddle to, before the show begins. Guess what's out of lightning lanes? My nemesis, Cali River Rapids. This is worse than when I was fiddle faddling for Winnie the Pooh or Alien Swirling Saucers. I've got that and it's tough to be bug left. I was hoping to do Cali last because I didn't want to get wet. But I'm going to fiddle faddle and see if I can pull it. But if I get taken down by Cali River Rapids. birds and numbers. The solo birds that come out, I'm not stressed out about it. It's when like all the birds come out. People get it. You get it. Um, anyway, that show is very underrated in my opinion. And everyone was laughing. The two guys that do the show, at least the ones I've seen, are very, very funny and they make great jokes. You learn a lot. This is what Animal Kingdom is all about. This is a great filler ride. I don't think you need to use lightning on it. There's plenty of room in the show without, um, without tapping in. So just come 20 minutes beforehand. So I fiddle faddled that whole time leading up to the show. I don't encourage fiddle faddling during shows or on rides because why else are you trying so hard, right? Um, and Callie came up a few times, but it, the earliest I saw was like 4.45, which is still in like two hours. And that would have triggered the 120 rule. Honestly, want to ride Cali last because I don't want to get wet. You know what I mean? I hate getting wet. So I went ahead and booked It's Tough to Be a Bug for 2:40 to 3:40. It's three o'clock right now, so we're gonna go do It's Tough to Be a Bug, and then we're gonna try again for Cali River Rapids. Also, is Dinosaur back up? No. It's not. It's tough to be a bug has been relatively close for the majority of the day. At most I saw it like an hour and a half out, but that was around noon, which is the peak busyness of this park. Normally you can get it within 30 minutes or so, but you also usually don't need it. This is one of my favorite filler rides, filler shows, because it's inside the Tree of Life, so you get a really awesome view as you weave through the queue. It's an air conditioning, but be warned. There are bugs, and if bugs stress you out, or giant spiders, or the dark, you may not want to ride this. Sit this. You know what I mean. And now, we fiddle paddle for Kelly. We've hit a nice part of the day where Kilimanjaro Safaris has half the weight of Cali River Rapids. I cannot believe I'm working this hard for a ride I literally can't see. Isn't it? It's supposed to be a bug. I think it's really cute and underrated and it makes me laugh, but it also makes children scream. I've never seen the show. I've seen it probably a hundred times and not ha heard children just screaming bloody murder and or having to leave the theater. So just keep that in mind. It's dark. There's big spiders and bugs. Your kids might not love it. Or Morgan, but that's fine. Dinosaurs also still closed. So I'm gonna go get a coffee and do some fiddle faddling. See if we can get Cali River Rapids. Okay, well that was dramatic for no reason because like six seconds after I stopped filming, I got one. It's in for 4.30, which is in like a little more than an hour 15 or so. 
So I'm gonna do what I would advise any of you to do when you're waiting for a lightning lane. I'm gonna go look at the animal trails. I'm still gonna get that coffee. And I'm just gonna enjoy being in Disney's Animal Kingdom until it's time to go ride the worst riding property. Great news, friends. I was enjoying my coffee at my secret coffee spot and I looked at the app and Dinosaur's back open. So I'm gonna go ride that since I've still got some time before Cali. I am very excited to ride Dinosaur. I was gonna have to like reenact it or something if it didn't reopen. It's got a 35 minute wait right now, which isn't too bad considering it just reopened. It may shoot up the way that Navi River Journey did. But luckily for us, we have a lightning lane. It also, I believe, has a higher capacity than Navi River Journey. So it wouldn't have quite as big of an issue. But it has been getting pretty long lines recently. Same way everything has. However, it's a little more varied than Avatar Flight of Passage and Navi River Journey. So you can usually still jump on here for less than 30 minutes, if you, especially if you come in the morning or the late afternoon. So this one I made many moons ago, we're finally cashing in. Remember I had to fiddle for just a few minutes to get this one. A lot of people ask if fiddle faddling and these tips only work because I'm a party of one. And when it comes to the Genie Plus rides, not the fancy rides, no, they actually work for up to a party of 10. The system allow you, will allow you to plan with up to 12. I said it's having issues with more than 10. So I've, I've abridged what I used to say up to 12 and I say up to 10 now. Um, so up to 10 people, it works the same. It just shows you the first available. I've been standing next to someone else with different party numbers linked and you can uh, see the same things. It's all about refreshing. It's all about snagging it quickly. And uh, I love getting messages from you guys or when people stop me in the parks and they say that fiddle faddling worked for them. I know it's not an ideal system to have to stand there and fiddle faddle sometimes to get what you want. If you want to skip the lines, that is kind of your only option. <laughs> on Expedition Everest as we head to Cali River Rapids. Expedition Everest is currently closed for refurbishment. No, they're not fixed in the Yeti. They literally have to take the mountain apart to do that. But it's been down for refurbishment. There still is not a reopening date. It's last was heard was April, but it's still not an official reopening date on the calendar, which is why I went ahead and filmed this video without waiting for Everest to come back because I wanted to get the whole series nice and neat and done. However, Expedition Everest doesn't really pose that big of a problem when it comes to Genie Plus. If it is still a fancy ride, it's usually one of the easiest to get fancy rides. It's also usually the least expensive fancy ride. It's usually one of the lower weights in the park, which is shocking considering how popular and amazing it is, but it's got a very large capacity, especially compared to things like Navi River Journey. So Expedition Everest usually has a lower weight than Kilimanjaro Safaris, than Flight of Passage, than Navi River Journey, and oftentimes than Dinosaur. So it's usually a good one to do standby or single rider when it's open. Additionally, if they do in fact put Expedition Everest into the Genie Plus category, like I'm guessing they will when it reopens, I would put it as a like tier one and a half priority. I say that because you should definitely prioritize it because it's an amazing attraction, but I still think you should prioritize things like Navi River Journey, like Kilimanjaro Safaris, even possibly Festival of the Lion King over Expedition Everest when it comes back, just because it's usually more readily available. But if you want me to do this again, <laughs> when that comes back and when potentially more things open, we certainly can. Ugh. It's time. The lightning lane's back here. This is my literal least favorite attraction in all of Walt Disney World. I have a lot of reasons. I hate water rides. I especially hate water rides that get you soaking wet. I especially hate water rides that get you soaking wet and then aren't even that fun. This one doesn't even have a big drop and it's incredibly short. It's under themed in my opinion. It's just, it's literally my least favorite thing in Disney World. Back into my water outfit. Magic. 
Okay, here we go. I've been watching people get off because this is also the exit. And like they're they're super wet. Like wetter than I remember. Is the are the are the Is it cause it's hot? Are the rapids up higher? Look how look how miserable these people look. They're soaking wet. They're soaking wet. <laughs> Dear Cali Gods, I'm sorry I made fun of your ride and called it the worst ride in Disney World. I didn't mean it. I did. But that's just because I don't want to lie. But also, please, don't get me that wet. I'm wearing slip shorts. You know what I mean? No one wants to chafe. It's not fun. So, thank you, Cali Gods for being Michael Jackson's favorite ride and for possibly not getting me that way. Namaste. skirt is wet, my slip shorts are wet, my underpants are wet, my socks, my shoes, my jacket, my shirt, my hat, my backpack. Mm. Let's do one final evening wait time genie check and then let's do pro tips for this park. Cali River Rapids 30 minutes, nothing available. Kilimanjaro as far as 25 minutes, nothing available. I have seen it pop back up though, but 25 minutes is not too bad. Uh, animation experience is over. Flight of Passage, 60 minutes, not too bad for Flight of Passage. So evening time might be the winner here, although the shows are mostly over. 45 over at Dinosaur. 10 added stuff to be above 55 at Navi River Journey. For the most part, nothing has any lightning lanes left. However, if you refresh a little bit, you may be able to pull something. Um, however, the wait times really aren't too bad right now at this park. Again, a lot of people hop out of this park. They start here and then leave. Look, Flight of Passage just popped up from a little fiddle faddle in 13 minutes. Um, out of this park into another park, but you might actually have great success starting uh, somewhere else and ending here or doing a nice calm pool day, resort day, and then coming here in the evening. Just make sure you get here early enough to see shows if that's something you're interested in. All right, let's go over some pro tips that we learned here at Disney's Animal Kingdom. For the most part, even on a busy day like today, I don't think you need Genie Plus here at Animal Kingdom. If it's an even busier day, like if it's a race weekend, a holiday weekend, maybe you want to go in on Genie Plus here, but I typically think unless you're buying it for the, your whole trip or your park hopping, you don't need it in this park. My biggest tip to battling this park is getting here early, especially as a resort guest. I say that at every park, but it's especially true here if you're not going to pay for Genie Plus. As a resort guest, getting here early and get those Pandora rides done and then head over to Kilimanjaro Safaris when that opens. As a not resort guest, Kilimanjaro Safaris doesn't open until after the park does, so you can take advantage of riding that one without too long of a line as well. Use those filler rides, use those filler shows, things like Feathered Friends in Flight. It's tough to be a bug in between those long waits. But for the most part, if you come early or stay late, there's not too bad of lines here at this park, so you can pretty much navigate it without Genie Plus. If you are purchasing Genie Plus, though, I don't think it's a bad thing. For some people, if they use it on three or four rides, that's going to be worth the cost of their purchase. So in that case, make sure you're 
focusing on Navi River Journey, Kilimanjaro Safaris, Expedition Everest when that comes back. Maybe that this park it's one where you want to pony up for just the fancy ride over at Flight of Passage and then do standby everywhere else. I love this park. It's my favorite of the parks. I think there's a lot of great food. There's great entertainment. There's things to do in between your lightning lanes so you don't actually even really have to fiddle faddle here as much as I did. You could book it a little bit further out. Go enjoy a drink at the Nomad Lounge. Go see one of the shows. Go walk one of the animal trails and then go hit that. So this park is a lot less stressful than Magic Kingdom or Hollywood Studios and you can stick in a radius a little bit easier than over at those parks. We've got Epcot next so look forward to that. Until next time friends, it's been magical. Now go watch the Hollywood Studios version of this. Bye! I'm going home to shower.